Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week, hopefully I can try and build a new boot floor for the Alferrari. Okay, so before we get stuck into things today on the boot floor, I thought I would take you on what I've actually been doing behind the scenes. So obviously there was a lot of work going backwards and forwards, and particularly Chris did a whole heap of work designing up the adapter plate, the adapter plate <laughs> to fit the Ferrari engine to the Subaru gearbox. And I sent that away to an engineering company to actually cut it out. And this is what we got back. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So it's got the, uh, the AN fitting in here. It's a nice smooth transition going through from the, uh, the oil's gonna return from the oil tank in through here. Uh, through this hole out of the adapter plate and then in through sealed by the o-ring into the ferrari engine and that is actually goes directly to the oil pump and that is uh, how the engine gets its oil feed and this thing is beautiful and the best part it fits it fits it sits beautifully on the uh, on the back of the engine i haven't actually fitted the dowels yet i'm gonna have to uh, also change, take out the studs. I'm gonna to have to change it over and fit it with uh, cap head bolts, but that's, uh, that's a simple, uh, simple task. So uh, we, have a, um, <laughs> we have a beautifully fitting adapter plate. I've also tried it on the Subaru gearbox. It fits, the, just the dowels are a little bit tight, but even the, uh, the engineers who, uh, who actually made it stated that, that they left the dowels a little bit tight because it's much easier to take some material out than it is to add material back. So uh, it is awesome. It is all exactly the way we wanted it. And this is a big step forward on fitting a Ferrari engine to an Alfa Romeo. Okay, so today my task is I wanna make the new boot floor for the Alfa Ferrari. And the way I'm starting that and getting uh, the base for it is I went down to Tim's and he thankfully actually had a reproduction boot floor panel that he was putting into another car. And uh, thankfully I managed to lay that down and I traced it out onto this piece of RAM board. This is a really good product, by the way. If you guys are looking for things to make templates out of, often you use sort of old cereal containers, uh, packets, you know, that, that thin cardboard you're looking for. This stuff is the stuff to get if you want to get uh, volume of it. It's, um, I think cost me about 50 bucks a roll or something like that. And it's, uh, it's RAM board. It's actually the stuff that they use to put on the floor of um, renovation sites, construction sites to protect the floor um, when people are tracing backwards and forwards in it. And you get it in a big roll and there's, there's heaps of it. So if you want this stuff, it's uh, much better than going to an art supply store and buying card because it's quite expensive there. This uh, is uh, quite affordable and uh, a good little tip. But anyway, I copied uh, the boot floor down onto this piece of RAM board. And, and one of the main reasons I'm not using the standard boot floor is because the original boot floor has the fuel tank uh, recessed into one side of it and it has the spare tire recessed on the other side. And I can't use either of those bits because there is no room under the car to fit exhaust pipes. So that is where my exhausts and my mufflers are gonna to have to go for the, uh, the Ferrari engine. Uh, otherwise, there's just not gonna be the space. And also, I'm gonna be using a fuel cell. And so I'm just gonna have a nice flat boot floor. So let's get started by cutting this out off of here and then I can trace it down onto my piece of steel that I'm actually gonna use and we can uh, go from there. Okay, so what I was going through and doing there is when I traced this panel, uh, a lot of the edges were already folded over. So all I got was the tracing of the flat surface and I just quickly went around and sort of scribbled around the outside roughly what bits were turned up, what bits were turned down, just so I've got a reference of what I wanted to build. And um, I, I didn't have nice even spacing. So now I want even spacing so that when I try and make this panel out of steel, I know how thick the edge is. And all I did is I got a, uh, I got my marker and a pen, 
taped them together so I've got a nice even spacing around the pen along my known line and the marker left my new cutting line. And uh, I did that all the way around. So now I actually have my template of what I want to cut out of the steel. So now I need to transfer this over and uh, cut it out. Well, I'm quite annoyed with myself. The piece of sheet steel that I got, I don't know how I messed it up, but it's just narrower than what I want. So um, it's not a big deal. Basically, all it means is that this straight edge that I was going to fold up can no longer be folded up on this. I'm just gonna leave that off. I still have the, uh, the fold up edges all the rest of the way around. And this bit where it was gonna sit in the boot instead of uh, joining sort of more on the vertical plane, the, uh, the, the steel I left in the boot is coming out horizontal, so I'll be able to uh, just sit it in there horizontally and, uh, and weld it in that way. So it's not a big deal either way. It's just, uh, just annoying and it added a bit of uh, structural rigidity to this while I was uh, putting it all together. But uh, I'm gonna do more about that a little bit later on. In any case, it's time to scribble this down onto the steel now and start cutting it out. Okay, so I've got my boot floor cut out. It's uh, the right shape, it's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna go around and mark out where I'm going to fold over. I'm happy with that. That first lip came out really good. The panel is still nice and flat, even though this has got a curve in it. So it has shrunk a little bit as I was uh, hammering it in. Um, I just made myself up a simple tool, just an old piece of uh, square stock that I had lying around. I cut a notch in it at the exact right depth of the uh, the bend that I wanted, at the lip that I wanted to uh, to match it up. And then I could just link it over and just just, you know, as you saw me go backwards and forward and just gradually fold it over. It means that I get the, uh, the, the fold in the exact right spot that I wanted all the way around without sort of trying to do it. Like I could potentially try and hold the dolly there, but the dolly will slide backwards and forwards and you won't get as, as, uh, as neat of an edge. I'm really happy with that. Um, the two sides are gonna be a little bit more of a challenge, I think, so uh, let's see how we go doing those. I am really happy with this edge. It's uh, come around nicely. Now I haven't folded it all the way up to 90 degrees, mostly because uh, actually the, the repro panel doesn't. And it gives me a little bit of room to just uh, to move to make it sure that it all fits nicely when it gets into the car. But that is looking really good. Like I'm really happy with how these corners turned out. There are a couple of little uh, pinches, little uh, wavy spots, obviously where um, this, has extra metal that wants to turn around these corners. And I just managed to uh, sort of tap it out using the uh, edge of the dolly and got them nice and straight and they shrunk nicely and it's looking really, really good.
So I'll show you here in a little bit more detail about what we're going through. So you can see how much the panel has curved and warped because I'm bending this edge up. And uh, I've got a good start there, but obviously I want this to be nice and flat and that is a long way from it. I managed to get it all nice and flat over here. You can see it sits nice and flat down there. It's uh, just this warp that's coming through the whole panel from here. So what I'm gonna do now is when I go through with the dolly, I concentrate on putting force on this side here and tapping it up and I need to stretch out these corners because the metal's not stretched, that's what's bringing this all up. So just by holding the dolly flat along here and I can just gradually work backwards and forwards and stretch this up. I've been watching a lot of Trev's blog and he's got lots of good tips on this stuff. So uh, if you're interested in sheet metal work, I highly recommend it. Um, so uh, I'll uh, just go through now and I'll show you the results I can hopefully get with a little bit of persuading. So you can see now that that has made it a whole lot flatter. Just by uh, concentrating on stretching out these corners, it's uh, flattened it out a lot, but I've got this sort of bigger ugly curve on this end. Same on this panel here. So what I'm gonna do now is with the dolly on top and hammering from underneath, I can try and sharpen up that lip and, uh, and flatten out these two ends and it should look pretty good. I'm really happy with that. That is uh, come out and it's a nice, quite flat boot floor. But um, it's flat, but it's still, it's, it's still a little bit flimsy. And that's where we come to the next step is adding a little bit more rigidity to this and doing something I haven't done before and that is bead rolling. And uh, putting a bit of, uh, a few beads in this floor. A, it, make it, it should make it look really cool and B, it should make it a lot stiffer, which means it, uh, it won't be so floppy. And this is a very basic bead roller. I got it on Amazon. It's a pretty uh, cheap system. It's only a couple hundred bucks, I think. And it comes with a whole bunch of different dies to make different shapes in the steel. I've never actually used one before, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, but uh, I'll just give you a bit of demo now and show you sort of the slightly different things you can do. So you can either, uh, with the dies, uh, this particular die I've got is, it can put a step in the, uh, in the steel, but uh, the one I'm probably gonna use on uh, the floor, it'll actually press a, uh, to bead into the, uh, into the floor, into wherever I mark it. So uh, let's swap these over and just get them in the right spot so that they're uh, ready to go. And we'll uh, see what, See what it does, see how it works. All right, so I just did a couple of little practice runs then and you can see the uh, shape that I've put into this panel and also the strength that I've added to it. It is really, really strong. From, from being just a really a really flimsy shit, bit of sheet metal, it adds a lot of strength because of that, uh, uh, that bead. But one of the big issues with doing a bead into a panel like this is that you do get warping and distortion because it's pulling the steel from either side into this into this groove it's it's stretching everything and it's got to get it from somewhere and that is one of the things that i was i'm cautious about one of the most common ways that people do it to uh, try and get rid of a bead is to actually run the piece they want to do through an english wheel first which is a big bit of gear that i don't have that can pre-stretch the metal so that when you stretch it it's, it's happy and it goes where it wants to go. I did do a lot of research online and I came across somebody who showed doing this same method, but instead of using an English wheel, they actually went on the opposite side first to the way they want to do it at about half the depth and then flipped it over and then did it to the full depth and got the bead without stretching the rest of the metal. So to pre-stretch it the wrong way 
half the depth and then flip it. So it means I have to mark my bead out on both sides of my sheet, but fingers crossed that works. We'll see. Well, I tried it on this small piece and it did still warp. Um, again, it's a very, it's a small piece, so it's, it's hard to judge. I'm hoping on this bigger piece, particularly being further towards the inside, I've got more uh, metal to, to take from there and I should be able to get it so that it is a, uh, a nice consistent shape all the way around. So uh, now it's time to go around and try and work out what sort of design I'm gonna put onto the floor to, so it looks good and is nice and strong. All right, so the first bead is in there. Um, there is a little bit of warp. Um, I'm definitely, uh, it's definitely not warp free. I'm gonna go around now and just uh, with a bit of a dolly and just panel beat around the, uh, the ends and see if I can sort of stretch this area out. It's the ends that seem to be the worst by the look of it, because um, it's sort of sucking in so much there, whereas along the middle it sort of uh, absorbs it better. So uh, let's do a little bit of hammer and dolly work and, uh, and then continue laying in some more beads. Okay, so I was quite worried that I'd actually wrecked the panel completely. And as you can see now, the oil canning is gone. Um, before, it was actually quite wobbly. It had done a lot of stretch and a lot of damage to the panel, and it was pretty bad. Now, I've managed to stretch it out so that it's good. I did stupidly think... I did hammer on dolly on the end, thinking I needed to stretch this out, but it actually needed shrinking. So I went back over it with my spot welder. It uh, just shrunk those little bits where I, I planished it out and stretched it in the corners. That uh, worked quite well. And to actually stretch this bead so that it actually works now and it's not actually oil canning, what I ended up doing, I actually changed the lower roller on my bead roller to a solid die so this was pushing hard into the flat and stretching that metal in the bottom of the bead. And I ran it through that twice and it's just, it's made all the difference. It's really, it's really, really helped and now it's, uh, now it's quite flat, that's good. And we're done. There is some uh, oil canning in it, but uh, once it's secured down and it's actually locked in, it's it's quite it's quite solid. Um, as I said, once it's, once it's uh, all welded all the way around, it it will lock in and it will be nice and solid. It has added a lot more strength to this panel, so you can see here I can just pick it up by one end. It doesn't flop. It doesn't twist. So um, that's pretty good. So now it's time to just have a quick look and actually see if this thing will fit in the car. <laughs> no, I'm a bit hesitant actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is awesome. So um, 
it still needs to be the Panels need to bring brought in on the sides a little bit, and it's a little bit tight on the uh, inside of the wheel arch. That side's probably good. This side, I can probably just uh, uh, finesse it a bit. Uh, you can see it's a bit wavy across the back, but that old panel is actually uh, pretty beaten up. Believe it or not, apparently that sort of uh, markings there, that's factory. That's what they were like. They are all got that, um, which I found was quite an interesting uh, thing when Tim showed it to me on all the ones that down at his shop. Um, but uh, as you can see, it all lines up pretty well. I mean, as I said, a little trimming in the corners and I think it's all going to work great. So we have a floor. Awesome. So there we go. We've got a boot floor, which is fantastic. Now, I am going to be putting some uh, supports underneath this. This is not just going to be sitting here like that. There's going to be a couple of... Uh, ribs at least one through the middle that I'm going to put into it but I might actually I might actually double up might put a couple of ribs in it just to uh, give it some extra support because the factory one actually because it had the spare wheel well right here that was nice and deep and that had a lot of structure and so did the, um, the the fuel tank actually gave it a lot of structure too this doesn't have that so I'm going to put some support underneath um, that's pretty straightforward also um, just thought, because I'm going to get questions, the uh, the steel I'm using is 09 millimeter um, steel sheet, same as what I'm using on the outside of the car, same as what the original one was, or close to it. So um, that is it for now. So um, I think it's time for mail time. All right, guys, well, it's been a while, but today we have another episode of mail time. And uh, today I have a, uh, a little package here from Tim Smythe in Parkside in South Australia. And he's just sent me Spotwell drill bit, which is, should be quite handy. He said it's a six mil, but it's also available on eight mil. He's used a six mil from, for a while and it's found to be the perfect size on most Alfa Romeo welds. Look forward to seeing uh, you use it and hear your opinion. Cheers, Tim. Well, thank you very much, Tim. And this thing looks like it is gonna be quite handy. So if you have a look here, you can see it's actually got a, um, it's got a flat, basically a very flat tip on it. There's just a very, very fine little point on the end um, to sort of center it, and then it can just cut the welds out flat. So that should be really handy to, uh, to give it a go and see how it goes uh, cutting out some of these spot welds. And if you guys have got anything you want to send through to mail time, um, sticker for the wall or some sort of thing from your part of the world, you can just send it through to Home Built by Jeff, PO Box 1520 Barrel, New South Wales 2576, Australia. Hey guys, in 1939, Spanish race car engineer Wilfredo Ricard designed his first ever race car for Alfa Romeo, the Tipo 162. This had a 3 litre supercharged 135 degrees V16 engine that made 490 horsepower. It had three fuel tanks, one that sat behind the driver and one on either side of the driver. Not the safest setup in the case of a crash. His second car designed the following year and it was the Tifo 512 and it was Alfa Romeo's first mid-engined car. This was powered by a flat 12, technically a 180 degree V12 twin supercharged 1.5 litre engine making 335 horsepower. On June 19, 1940, test driver Attilio Maranoni was killed testing the 512 suspension. And unfortunately, due to the war, neither the 512 or the 162 were ever raced. All right, I was uh, quite happy with the progress today. I got the uh, whole boot floor done. It needs um, a little sort of adjustment, but I am very happy considering I've never actually used the uh, bead roller before. Um, it turned out quite good, so... Um, it looks like something you might have taken out of my kitchen. I hope it's not an oven tray. Well, I could probably make oven trays now for you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yay. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, as always, uh, follow us on Patreon. It really helps us out. Um, links in the description. Grab some merch. Some of these uh, cool shirts that yep. uh, my mate Louis designed. They're, they're cool. I hope you're enjoying this show. If you are, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or... Um, that's it. That's it. Cool. All right. <laughs> Bye, See guys. you guys. Fredo Ricard. This one. And it was the Tipo 5112. <laughs> this is Alfred Romeo's first mid-engine car. Either the S12 or the 6512. Oh damn, it's your hat, it's your, it's your hangar, it's your hangar. <laughs> <laughs>